This cat can jump an amazing seven feet in the air from a standstill. Savannas jump higher and farther than any other domestic breed. Hello. Savannas, I have two savannas, so they're amazing. They're incredibly beautiful cats. They look like little leopards. This is the Savannah, the largest domestic cat, weighing up to 30 pounds. Savannas are larger in size, and they look like a wild cat. It's the newest breed of cat created in 1986 by crossing the wild serval cat of Africa with a domestic cat. Want to adopt one? Get ready to spend up to $20,000. Why? Because these cats are very difficult to breed and quite controversial. That means a very small breeding pool. A lot of states actually don't recognize them as a domestic breed and they've made them illegal in several states. Currently banned in New York City, Massachusetts, Hawaii, and Georgia, the half-wild side of savannas is too wild for some. They worry that the wild side of the savanna could emerge and change the ecosystem if too many savannas escaped into the wild. But for many owners, it is that wild element that attracts them to the savanna. It makes owning these cats a unique experience. Savannas are bred with varying degrees of wildness in them, which is measured by the filial system, a formula for measuring the percentage of wild genes in each cat. The F1 is 50% wild cat. When you take an F1 female and breed that to a domestic cat, you have an F2, and so on. Their serval lineage produces some very long legs, which makes them appear to stand as tall as a medium-sized dog and they have black tear marks running from the corner of their eyes down to the whiskers. And the purpose of this is actually to reflect light when they're hunting. And this actually comes from the genetics of the wildcat that's been bred into them. And those huge ears work like radar, spinning 180 degrees and allowing them to hone in on their prey. And being from the wild, they come with some odd noises. They also do this thing called uh, a snake hiss, which can kind of take you off guard. While all cats growl and hiss to express distress, the savanna has a more extreme hiss. It's closer to its days in the wild, where it would imitate the snake hiss in times of danger. Savannah owners Chris and Tina Fruhoff fell in love with the serval cat while on safari in Africa. One evening we went out and we saw a serval just out, you know, catching a snake. It just was a stunning animal. They began researching when they returned and ended up with two savannas, Kayla and Mondo. Probably the funniest reaction is, is that a cat? They, have, they don't get it. They think it's a, a wild animal in the house. We'd love for our cats to be able to roam around outside, but you know, the area that we live um, is just not safe. So we built a nice little enclosure. This enclosure allows Mondo and Kayla to connect with their African roots, but not return to them. On Halloween evening a few years back, Mondo showed them what kind of trouble he can get into. A house sitter was watching the cats for us, and uh, we called in on our way home. She told us that Mondo had gotten out. He just bolted out the door. Mondo was lost, and when your backyard is vast open space, the story takes on a whole new meaning. There's mountain lions, there's bobcats. It could be very dangerous, and while he's a big cat, we were very concerned. They posted flyers in the neighborhood and online, hoping they get Mondo back. It was just devastating to think that um, he could be hurt or that we were never going to get him back. A week later and many miles away, something unusual was spotted by Christina Gray. My headlights caught the spots on this animal. I thought, mountain lion? I don't know. It looked more like a cheetah. The very next day, her neighbor, John Stewart, had a similar sighting in his backyard. I heard this cry come from the kitchen. There's like a cheetah or a leopard outside. I said, no way. I think I remember grabbing a broom or something and coming out. It's a big cat, you know, and uh, I didn't know what I was facing. John approached the cat, and it rubbed up against him and purred. He instantly knew he had a domesticated cat on his hands. Quickly, this cat was the talk of the neighborhood, and they decided to put their efforts together to find this exotic cat's owner. 
I did find pretty quickly a post without a picture that said, large lost cat with spots. And then it said San Anselmo, but I thought, San Anselmo? No way. I mean, that's 10, 12 miles as the crow flies. It was so hard to believe that he could have gone that far. But I did write an email, though I just said, I may have seen your cat. I guess it was early the next morning when I got Tina's response. She had attached two pictures in. I just felt thrilled to be able to tell her, you know, I'm pretty sure I've got your cat. Mondo had indeed been found, and the very next day, he was reunited with his family. We're just incredibly lucky that Mondo found his way to some really nice people who really cared about him, took care of him, fed him, and really made the effort to, to find us and get him back to us. He was really happy to, to see the family, and they were too. What do you think about Mondo? I love Mondo. Yeah. This is an easy cat to care for, but it's twice as much cat and it's a cat that actually likes water. I occasionally take my cats in the shower with me. <laughs> they seem to like water more so than most cats. This is a healthy combination of wild and domestic cat. Because of the Savannah's breeding with the wild cat, there's very little health issues with them. That's because new breeds don't suffer from inbreeding. These are great family pets, but always acknowledge the size, strength, and intelligence these domesticated wild cats possess. Owning a savanna is a lot like owning a dog, so it may not be for everyone. And they have very few health issues. Savannas are low maintenance, but twice the cat. If you've got the space and enjoy the wild side, this is the cat for your family. Mondo, Mondo. Mondo, Mondo. Now it's time for Cats Gone Wild. Mondo isn't the only cat who wandered away. Most cat owners know only too well about a kitty gone missing. Cats have only been domesticated about 7,000 years, and unlike dogs, they're not really changed from their wild ancestors. But when a cat wanders, where does he go? One couple decided to investigate this mystery. We have the answer to the question that all cat owners want to know. They want to know, where is their cat going during the day? To find the answer, Deirdre and Michael Cross put a camera on the collar of their cat, Cooper, that automatically takes a picture every two minutes. I'm shocked at so much green and so many beautiful plants. You see these pictures that Cooper comes up with. It, it's, it's amazing. Cooper's view on the world is so different than what most people see. He's changed the way that I think about my neighborhood. Sometimes wandering in familiar confines can get a cat in trouble. Seth and Kelly Levy found this out the hard way with their cat, Gracie May. The Levy's live in Florida. One day, Seth was packing for a business trip to Dallas. I had pretty much finished packing. I left the bag a little bit open in case there were any last minute things. Not knowing it, Seth zipped up the bag with Gracie May inside and headed to the airport. A few hours later, Kelly came home and realized something was wrong. She always comes right down the stairs to greet me, and this time she wasn't there. Meanwhile, Seth and Gracie May are on their trip to Dallas. When I got to Dallas and got off the plane, I called my wife, and she was crying, she was frantic. When I couldn't find her, I, I started to panic a little bit. Here's where you think the story will have a happy ending. Seth checks into his hotel, Gracie May pops out of the bag, they all live happily ever after, right? Wrong. <laughs> A guy arriving at Dallas has a suitcase just like Seth's and takes it from the carousel. My bag was nowhere to be found. You can imagine what it was like for the guy with Seth's bag. He opens the bag he thinks is his. Not only is it the wrong bag, but a cat's inside. Gracie was wearing her tag, so the confused man was able to call a relieved Seth. I received a phone call. He was so surprised to find Gracie in the bag. Luckily, Gracie May made it back home, and Seth will always check his luggage before he zips it closed. Curiosity took Gracie May on an unlikely trip, but asked the McElhaney family about their cat, Emily. This kitty's curiosity led her on an amazing journey, far beyond her Wisconsin home. Emily is a very curious cat. We're always looking for Emily. One day, Emily went missing and didn't come home. She'd snuck out of the house and made her way into a nearby paper factory. 
Emily then somehow got into a shipping container. Unknowing workers sealed her inside. As the days passed and Emily remained missing, the McElhaney's began to worry. I really thought it was just going to be another, she's here in the neighborhood somewhere, she'll turn up. Meanwhile, Emily was on the journey of a lifetime. The container she was in was shipped by truck to Chicago. It was then loaded into a boat that meandered through the Great Lakes and into the Atlantic. Back in Wisconsin, things looked bleak to the McElhaney's. We had given up hope. We started to just wish that she was safe and OK and someone had made a good home for her. Emily's ship finally made port on the French coast. She was loaded on yet another truck and reached her final destination at a factory in Nancy, France. Emily was on the road for a total of 30 days. Emily had literally nothing to eat for a full month until the workers in France unpacked her. When they opened the container, they heard meowing, so they knew there was an animal in there. Shocked workers found Emily's tags. Donnie took the call, informing the family of Emily's whereabouts. And they said, in France. And I said, the country? I had lived here like eight or nine months. I'm thinking, France, Wisconsin? <laughs> Arrangements were made for Emily to be flown first class back to the grateful McElhaney's. I honestly didn't get emotional until we picked her up at the airport. Emily has traveled farther than any of us ever have or ever probably will. Everything turned out OK in the end, but Emily is now strictly an indoor cat. More to come on Cats 101. This cat is the grand dame of one of New York's top hotels. Is this breed completely bald? This cat may be the world's best mouser and the breed whose fur is used to make handbags. Now it's time for our feline facts. Until fairly recently, cats were widely believed to be colorblind. Tests now show that domestic cats can distinguish three colors. What are they? The answer when we come back. Cats were thought to be colorblind, but recent tests show that they can, in fact, distinguish the colors green, yellow, and blue. 